Maryland sports fans, there's only one sports book in the great state of Maryland with over 50 years' experience booking bets and supporting customers. Bet Fred Sportsbook at Long Shots is now open and is the only sports book in Frederick offering cash betting on football, basketball, world soccer, and more. Visit the Bedfred Sportsbook at I-270 and MD-85 in Frederick, right next to Longshot's Off-Track Betting. Go to BedfredSports.com for more information and your chance to win exclusive merchandise. Must be 21 or older. Play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. This is Charlie McBride, Kevin Crawley, and I'm Chris Bell with Proceed, and you're listening to The Loud Spot with Sebastian. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Loud Spot. I'm your host, Sebastian Cosby, right out of Oklahoma City. I got an awesome band, Perceived, is in, not my house, but their own house somewhere else. And they're from Dallas. What's up, guys? What's up, man? Hey. So, we were talking earlier, and you guys are from Dallas. I'm in Oklahoma, not that far from each other. Oh, man, it ain't. It really isn't that far. Right around the corner. I think Chris Bell put a... A uh, post about your last con- I don't know if it was your last concert or one of your last concerts in October. I almost jumped in my car and I was like, I'm, I'm going to go to Dallas, babe. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to get a hotel. <laughs> I wanted I wanted to do it to introduce myself to you guys, you know? Cool, man. Yeah. You should have yeah. come on down. Yeah, it was, it was actually it was a really good, show, good yeah. show. It turned out great. There was a lot of people there. We were yep. really surprised. So da- is Dallas still pretty open as far as concerts go? It was. Um, I think they just closed bars back down yeah, and reduced the capacity to go. again because of the, the recent cases, I guess. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of venues that are like restaurant slash bars, and they're kind of using that loophole to uh, so they, yeah. still keep yeah. things rocking. To get you guys in, I was actually I work for a law firm that's based in Dallas, and I had to go down. I had to go to Garland for two weeks to train. Uh, for a management position. And I went down there and I trained and I went like to the bowling alley. Texas Roadhouse was open. The bars were closed. Yeah. This was back in July. But mm-hmm. I lived in Fort Worth. My favorite restaurant in the Dallas Fort Worth area is Papacitos. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good stuff. Have you so they got Papacitos, Papa Do's, and Papas. Yeah. The burger yeah. place. Dude, how fucking good is that place for real? <laughs> You're all good. <laughs> what other podcaster asked you about Papa Do's? Nobody. That's None. fucking right. And don't forget that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys have been on a lot of podcasts, I think. I, I guess, is there a lot of people hitting you guys up to be on podcasts? Uh, we've had a few. Uh, it's been uh, definitely interesting. I know it's a mix between actual live where you see us and then the kind that are on the radio where you just hear us. Yeah, I you know what, and I'll probably do a little video of this at some point. I think I will. <laughs> I don't know when I'll do it, but I'll, I'll find a cool subject. And I'll hit the record button. I'll put that. I'll put that on Facebook. So how long have you guys? How long have you guys been a band for? Uh, we formed in May of 2018. Uh, me and Charlie's been jamming since high school, so you know, 20 years plus years, and we've been jamming with Kevin for 10 plus years. So it's just kind of finally came back around. Um, story kind of happened. Uh, me and Kevin got sober and needed a hobby mainly. We, we needed something to do, so we called up Charlie and, and we started jamming. We just got together to have some fun, um, and that's how it all started. We just started playing, started writing, uh, picked up some old songs that we worked on back in the day, which is some of the ones on the EP, and we finished those with Kevin. And we just kind of been writing and continuing from there, and it's kind of grown into what it is now. We're just still having fun with it. Well, don't judge me for drinking a beer then. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. Yeah, I quit drinking for me. I don't right, judge yeah. nobody. Help you know, do your thing. <laughs> Help quit. So I thought you guys started in 2018 because I went back and looked at Facebook to look at some of your videos. And I saw the song Living Hell on um, 
on Facebook, but that was in 2018. You guys played it like an acoustic type show or something like that. Uh, that was our very first performance ever at a Halloween show. Yeah, a little Halloween party. Yeah, I, a little Halloween party. That's the very first time we played in front of anybody. Yep. Yeah, it was uh, October, you know our family. <laughs> <laughs> it was October 28th, I think. I, I literally like I, I didn't come prepared. I literally just looked at that. Like five minutes before I called you guys, so cool. it's pretty raw. <laughs> but I, I did see that there was some Halloween makeup on, and so I figured it was October twenty eighth, probably a Halloween show. So why did it take two years to? You guys obviously had that song written a long time ago to finally just come out with it in twenty twenty. Oh man, we we started uh, tracking the album. Uh, Pre production began January of twenty nineteen for this EP, um, and uh, the guy we were. Re- recording with um his wife passed away due to cancer through the recording process so there was a big pause and a lot of uh waiting you know but um we were we weren't in no hurry we were still writing new stuff we were we've been working on new music the whole time is that Uh, that's why it kind of took a while to get out it was just a slow process of of getting everything finished because we didn't want to just say oh dude we're going to go with someone else we didn't we were going to stick with this the whole way yeah yeah, that's awesome. I'm happy, very happy with the way it turned out. Yeah, dude, it turned out so good. So, did you? Is this one of the songs you wrote a long time ago, or is this one you wrote in 2018? This is actually a riff Charlie came up with 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't finished. The middle part is kind of the new part, but everything else was the old stuff. And yeah, we just kind of finished it up, getting in the room and jamming. Yeah, that's basically how it came together. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to play. Living hell right now. This song is I like. I love this song. This song fucking jams, man. I love cool. it. Then, yeah. then I'm gonna talk about the unboxing that you recently did. That's also on your Facebook video. Cool. Let's do it right now. <laughs> this is perceived. This song is called Living Hell. Let's go. Nobody's waiting for you 
inside my mind Cause I can't stop this madness till the end of time Where Nobody's waiting for you Nobody's waiting Yep, I really, like, I love the guitar, I love the drums on that song, I love the beat, I love the vocals. It's it's hard to believe you guys are just a three-piece band pulling out a sound like that, because that sounds like a fucking four- or five-piece, like, hard rock group, you know? Hell yeah. Oh, thank you, man. Oh, man, appreciate That's, it. Uh, um, that was the point, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, guys, you guys have the sound, you guys have, like, a metal sound, but with the vocalist, definitely goes more hard rock. Than metal, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it, it, I think it has that radio appeal. Oh, awesome! That, oh, that's always cool. a plus, or it used to be. I mean, some people strive to not be on radio again. Yeah, I get. I know that that that, that 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 that's what I do. I strive to not be on the radio. If you hear any of my songs, you'll know that it's like, no, this is horrible. It's it's. Well, I mean, it's, but what is uh, radio now? I mean, they radio. they play the top ten, top twenty, and that that's it. I mean, who even gets played on the radio? Uh, new bands anymore? You know? You, you know, I I listen to um, Octane a lot. And honestly, a lot of this shit's starting to sound the same. It's like, this band sounds just like that band. It sounds like this mm-hmm. band. And you have all these bands that, they have that, that there's like a new metal sound that's kind of recently kind of, uh, I guess, just exploded. And that, and for, unless you're a band like Seven Dust or Deftones that's coming out with a new song, if you're a newer band, you sound just like all those other bands that they're playing. I think it's kind of stupid. Like, I think music and songs have lost a lot of its originality because of the, the music scene and the industry itself. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. I think it has great. a lot to do with how people are writing music nowadays too, of, you know, um, back in the day you had to get in the room together and jam it out. And that's kind of the philosophy that we still follow. A lot of bands are, you know, just press and record on a computer and recording riffs and sending it to each other and piece and songs together that way. Yeah. Um, uh, and then the drum, the drums aren't even real drums half the time. They're right. they're automated that the drummer just has to learn. Uh, Chris, I can tell this bothers you. I'm a <laughs> I, I'm a drummer. You, you see that? You, you see that painting right there? Yes, sir. That's me, and I'm a drummer. And so that's that's a photo of me. There's actually close up of, of the tattoos. I know you can't sit on here, but uh, it, it, it's me. And Chris, I'll tell you one thing. You are one hell of, of a promoter for the band. You must have sent me. Six or seven emails about playing your band on the podcast, but I could tell you didn't realize that you were just sending it over and over again. Because, but you know what? You don't have to realize that. You're hey, you're pushing your shit out there, brother, and that's what you have to do. Good job. Yeah, I mean that's that's all you can do. I mean, if you once a band has an album or anything to push, they should push it. Uh, send it to everybody. I mean, the worst thing somebody's gonna do is trash it, not look at it, and you never know who might come across it and actually. Dig what you're trying to do. Yeah. A lot of bands think that, you know, they they do all the work, they go in the studio, they record it, and they put out a CD, and then they're like, all right, I'm just going to wait for it to make me famous. And that's not how it works. (laughs) I was talking with someone, I don't remember who it was, but it wasn't that long ago, and I was saying, you know, you got to really promote yourself, and and they were like, you know, we don't really want to bother people, and they can hear us and find us. I'm like... Dude, and I'm, look, I'm an entrepreneur, okay? I am an entrepreneur, like, big time. I've had businesses and all kinds of shit. I fucking push my shit everywhere. I share my shit everywhere. And, you know, I'll share it. Like, I work with Kick Rocks Entertainment. And she'll share my post around, like, 67 fucking times. And I'm like, Lord. she's like, hope that's okay. I'm like, fucking get it out there. Push it. Push it. Because the more you push it, the more people are going to are gonna listen to you. And I, I do want to say, awesome. before I talk about the album uh, artwork on this, I, I also want to say that when we started this podcast, before we started it, 
We're like, yeah, yeah, we know the routine. We know the routine. You're just going to, like, fill the song in later. And I'm like, no, I fucking listen to that shit. You know why, though? I think it keeps authenticity. It keeps, like, when you're, li- like, I could have heard the song, maybe taking some notes down, but actually listening to it and then talking about it after I just fucking heard it is so much better. I think so. Brought on. Yeah, yeah then you get the fresh opinion right, yep. right there, right off the top. Yeah, and even if I think it sucks, I won't say it sucks. I love that shit. Best song I ever heard in my life. So (laughs) pretty all right. That's a good one. Uh, Next one. What's the next one? (laughs) So what? What is the album art about on Living Hell? All right. Well, uh, we we kind of came up. Well, we wanted to do uh, uh, each song have its own artwork to have its own kind of thing, and we were thinking, well, Living Hell. Okay, let the house burning. We wanted to burn the house. And we couldn't burn a house. I mean, <laughs> it so bad. We wanted to burn a house. Around the pond. But, you guys, you guys got some pyrotechnics going on on your, on your, on your. On, you got this guy over here all the time. <laughs> God. So I, I come up with the idea of uh, getting a cool dollhouse, and uh, uh, Chris's girlfriend actually uh, made it all up for us. Made it look yeah. real cool, like an old. Uh, Vintage looking house, and we took it out to a family member of mine's land, set it on fire, and took a bunch of pictures. And then, yeah, and then is. you pulled the good ones out, right? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was probably I think five hundred photos or so, yeah. and that that's the winner right there. Wow. Yeah, that's that is great. Okay, your guys is. Uh, what are some of your past shows that you've played? Like some of your most memorable shows that you played. I guess for me, uh, uh, it would be when we got to open for a band out of North Carolina called Stellar Circuits. Um, I've been a fan of theirs for over a year, and they were finally coming to Texas, and I heard wind through a buddy of mine and uh, asked if he could get us on the bill, and he actually got us on the bill. So when I talked to him and told him, hey, yeah, man, I'm going to be there. I'm also, my band gets to open for y'all. So it was really cool to get to meet them, and they, they watched this jam. They jammed out the whole time, and yeah, super cool guys. Yeah, awesome dude. Cool. Great yeah. band. If you haven't heard them, check them out. Stellar Circuits. So you guys, yeah, one of my highlights. You guys don't have a management team then, huh? No, no. no. We manage ourselves. We're fully independent DIY. Are you looking to get managed ever? Or are you just gonna try to ride the fucking train uh, until? Uh, yeah, we're, you know we we have full time jobs. Um, this is a great hobby. I love playing music. Um, if it ever went anywhere, it'd be great. But we're not. We're just having fun yeah, with I'm it right now and it. seeing I'm where it goes. You know? And, you know, where it takes us cool, but right now we're not focused on that. We're focused on jamming and writing new stuff together. Mm-hmm. That's also, you know, I, I said before we played the last song that we're going to talk about the unboxing, and I fucking totally forgot about it. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going to talk about it after we play Darkening. <laughs> Dark, Darkening, right? This is, is this, this is your, is this your newest single release? Uh, Darkening was the one released in the beginning of October. So it was the one right before the last one. It was yeah. the third single. Third single. Which one was the last one released? The very last one we ended up releasing Portrayed Belief last. <laughs> we're we're going to play Darkening right now with Perceived. Let's go.
So what is it like to have to... I'm making you guys hear a song you've heard like probably 30 million times. <laughs> but when you guys hear it again, what's it like to hear it again after probably not listening to it for however long you haven't listened to it? Uh, it's, it's good to be able to listen to it and not cringe and and, and think, hey, you know what? That, that, that's pretty good, man. That's a good performance. Um, it sounds good. I can hear everything. So it, it's pl- it's pleasant. If so we're it, together, we usually end up complimenting each other. Like, man, I really love that one role you do in the. You yes. know, that's good. You want? I mean, that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, I hate listening to my podcast. I I, 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 I listen to it to edit it, and then I, I might listen to the final one. But I don't even like my voice. I think my voice is for me personally. It's hard to hear yourself talk. Uh, for you as a for, for as a singer though, it's probably a little bit different um, than talking. Yeah. I hate my voice. I hate hearing my talking voice. I've noticed when I watch these podcasts and stuff back, and I listen to myself talk, it's kind of uh, I sound like that. But I, but when I hear myself singing, I guess I've just accepted that's how I sound. <laughs> but, yeah. but talking, I don't hear myself a lot. So, so who does who does what in the band altogether? I want to know. There's, there's three, a three piece band. So who does what in the group? Charlie does guitars, Kevin does bass and backup vocals, and I do drums and vocals. Okay, so how hard is it to drum and play the vocals? He's a magician. It's He's very a wizard. Easy, it just kind of comes naturally. Uh, I've been doing it since I was a little kid, so I kind of like you with that. Is that hard to do live, or you just you just kind of you? No, but when, just, when you record though, you do the drums separately, and then you get on the microphone, right? Yeah, we yeah. do them separate just so you can get the absolute best take of, it, of both. Um, plus, of course, whenever you do vocals, you don't want to have the drums coming in the mic and, and, and you want to be in like your closet or a secluded area or something where you can muffle the vocals. But I have to say, he does amazing live. Like, yeah. you, he, you can't tell that the singer is back behind a set of drums. He's never out of breath. It's it's pretty amazing, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely. I, you know, I, I did see that you were the drummer and the vocalist. And that was a question. I was, I'm happy you brought that up. I just, I, you know, the first band I was ever in, I was drumming and screaming, and which was a horrible idea. And it sounded like, we were like sh- telling our parents, check us out. And I was like just screaming. I thought my lungs, some, I didn't know what I was talking about. But, <laughs> but, I, but I guess if you practice it long enough, it winds up working out. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I, like I said, I've done it since I was a little kid. So I just got, once I get back there, it's kind of getting a zone and it just kind of happens. There's definitely no thinking involved. It just, it just kind of goes once you set it in motion. So the unboxing of the CDs. And so yeah. you knew you obviously knew what the album cover looked like and all that stuff before you, before you got the CDs. Yeah. But yeah. you open. Uh, how many CDs did you have? Um, and that box has 160. In that box, uh, we actually ordered 500 copies of our CDs. So there's that. That's like it. And what, um, when did you order that? Kevin had already seen what they looked like. Charlie was the only one that hadn't seen them yet. So. Oh, that, is that why he did the unboxing? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why he did the unboxing. Okay. So the, the reaction is genuine when he opens it up. <laughs> that was the oh, first time he ever and got And I forgot it. that I was we were like recording. I'm like just looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie. You knew Charlie. It. <laughs> Move along with it. So, yeah. so did you guys, when did you order those CDs? Well, when did they come in, I guess I should say? They came in in September because we wanted to make sure we had them before the release date in October, and we were trying to get them before. We were going to have a different CD release show in October, um, but the bar was still closed that we had booked the show in in January. We booked the show for October in January, and, of course, it got canceled because the bar's closed. And so we had them on hand and stuff. That's why we uh, put them online, and, and we, we had them at our show in uh, Arlington, the, the last show we did. We've only played two shows this year, one in February and the one in Ar- uh, October in Arlington. At least you guys are doing shows. There's so many bands that are not doing shows, like, at, at all, especially if you live in California. Like, fuck you. If you're in a oh, band, you yeah. live in California, they're Jeez. fucked out there, man. They can't do... Yeah. Sh- they can't... I, my, I'm from California, and all my friends, that like, they're, and I have a lot of friends in bands, and they're like, they can't do, they can't play anything. All the bars are shut down. And they, I think they just went on lockdown or something like that recently. Like, they have very strict guidelines. And I'm like, dude, fuck that. The bands, like, I, and I, you know, the bands, this is how they make, maybe not their full-time living, but this is how they make their extra income is by playing their music right. and selling their merch, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. Yep. yeah. And that's how you grow your fan base. 
Yeah, that's it. And that's it. And that's really the best way to grow your fan base is live people coming to see you. It's been the probably been the worst thing about releasing an album in 2020 is there's no real way to really get behind it and promote it and get out there and physically yeah. tour yeah. and do anything with it. It's different, like talking to people over online and stuff versus you're at the show you've just played and chatting with the dude right after. You know that connection you get with people like that. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely, definitely. It was hard to have that without that. I just think seeing music live too. You know. Uh, that's kind of how I jams is their live show. You yeah. know, it, yep. if it don't sound, um, you know, you, you anything can sound great on a record, yep. but Studio if you magic. can, if you can make it sound like good music, we're actually in the room with people. I think that's something special. Yeah. You're making me feel bad about not driving my ass to Dallas <laughs> last, last month. I mean, it's a three hour drive. I lived in Fort Worth uh, when I was there. I lived in Fort Worth. But, like, I, I should have made that show. Next time you guys play in Dallas, if you give me a heads up, Chris, I'll, I will see if I can make accommodations to go to, go to the, the concert. Because I would love to see you guys live. I would like to see the drummer singing and playing the drums at the same time. So when you're playing the drums at the same time, are you, like, in front or do you stay in the back like most drummers, uh, most drummers do? Most uh, clubs have the drones set up on a riser in the back, so I'm usually, you know, restrained to the riser. Yeah, they don't want to move all the microphone cables and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, I just kind of stay in the back uh, and and do it from there and hope that, you know, most people stand up to try to look, see see who's singing and and kind of, you know, they don't sit back down and kind of want to watch. (laughs) Like, where's the voice, where's the voice coming from? That's usually how it starts. Who the the hell's singing? Um, And then... uh, there's been a couple shows where they, the band backline. So, you know, the big band's already set up back there and we set up in the front and those have actually been the really good shows where the people mm-hmm. are right in front of my drum set. And it's just crazy. The, so, the last show we played in October, the one, the one uh, you wanted to go to, uh-huh. I put you up at my house too, man. Yeah, you dude, you need a place yeah. to crash, man. We got you. We yeah. got you. So I don't have, so I don't have to get a hotel. No, no man. Yeah. No, we all got extra rooms. I think at our house. I think I, I think I think I have some uh, some points though at the Omni. <laughs> like, yeah. like I love the I love the Omni and the the right. gate the Gaylord's awesome. Well, whenever, yeah. whenever whenever we go to Dallas, like we usually go there for like uh, Mother's Day and uh, what my wife no Father's Day sorry Father's Day and my wife's birthday are right next to each other because my wife's birthday is June sixteenth. And so she loves going to like the Gaylord Texan or the Omni. That's like her thing. She's trying to be all oh, fancy, yeah. trying to be fancy all the time. And so we know. So I think we have some points at those places. But I would rather be the couch guy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that the really nice <laughs> is that the couch right there I'm sleeping on that you guys are sitting on? It could it be. Could be. <laughs> Let's do it. I'll, I'll do it. How, dude? How pissed off? Like how upsetting is it that there's bands that. The drums aren't actually authentically done by the drummer. They're put in, and then at a live concert, the drummer has to learn how to play that, or, it, or it's almost a, a different song, right? Yeah, they, uh, it, it's weird with the program drums. You know, I've heard that uh, <clears throat> some people like it whenever um, the dr- a drummer programs the drums versus someone who doesn't know how to play drums because it's not playable sometimes whenever they program them because they can do anything on that on the tracks. Apparently, I don't know how to program drums. I'd rather. I'd rather sit on an electronic kit and just plug into a computer if I had to and play it. <laughs> We're kind of old school, though. We uh, we, we <laughs> yeah jam yeah. it all out in the room to figure it out. Uh, and if it don't work live in the room, it it's yeah it's I, trash. Dude, I might have... look, I'm 38 years old, so I'm not like old, but I'm old enough to like remember when music was fucking music and people uh, sti- yeah. people still had originality and you used to listen to the rock stations growing up when I was a kid on the radio. And like I said earlier, you would hear different. Every band had their own different sound, and, and then when a, a local band, you could be like, "Oh, you kind of sound like these guys, or you sound like this, or you sound like that." But nowadays, like seriously, they just fucking all like everyone just tries to sound the same to get their shit on the radio. I think originality yeah. needs to happen, man. It needs to come back to like Deftones sounded nothing like Corn, sounded nothing like Godsmack, sounded nothing right. like Seven Dust. They all have their Mudvayne, Slipknot. Even when Papa yeah. Roach fucking yeah. broke out, you know, that's one of those bands, one of the last bands to kind of have their own style of uh, saliva, you know. And now you got all these other bands that just want to want to do whatever they can to get managed. Which I get that, I get what they're trying to do, 
but they really need to be themselves. You guys definitely do yourselves. Yeah, thanks. It's the only way to set yourself apart from everybody else. I yeah, mean, you have do, to. Yeah, do, yeah. do you. Don't try to don't set your goals to be, I want to sound like this band right there. Right there to me, you're already kind of setting yourself up. In, In a world of pink, pink Starburst, be a yellow Starburst. <laughs> Yeah, screw one, pink starbirds. Nobody likes <laughs> the yellow one. The hey, yellow one. <laughs> so your song portrayed belief, right? Yes. What's the story behind this song? Oh man, Charlie wrote this song. Uh, well, twenty years ago, this actual story is the solo took twenty years to finish. Yeah. The song's been done for. Uh, it was a little bit longer. Ninety nine. It had been in ninety nine. Yeah, about ninety nine, tw- two thousand. So it's a good twenty year old song. Party. Shit. 1999. So when we got together jamming in the room again for the first time, just having fun is one of the ones we all kind of learned and played and thought, hey, this one still, this one still feels like it has the magic. Let's yeah. let's put this one on there. So did so did you guys play this song together in 1999 as a drummer and guitarist? And were you, were you also the vocalist back then as well? Yes, I was. Me and Charlie uh, were in a band. Uh, it was called Decipher back then, but that was one of the only songs that was finished as far as structure wise. But uh, like I said, the solo wasn't done. Yeah. So when you guys redid it now in 2020, when it just came out, did you redo the drums? Did you keep all the vocals the same, or did you change it because you've grown as a musician, or did you just stay it to what it was? You stayed true to what it was back when you wrote it. Um, everything was pretty much we shortened the solo a little bit because it was actually longer than it is now. It was like, oh <laughs> was, was it an, was it an epic eight minute solo? Yeah, it was, it was like seven minutes, and we got it down to about six. five. <laughs> was it really six minutes long? Yeah. 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 Holy no. shit! It, it was longer though. Uh, yeah, like the intro played four yeah. instead of two, stuff like that. But it's cohesive, and I I think it it fit. It's even though it is long, it. It fits. Yeah, no, and you know what? There are there are bands that do that. That had a band on. They had like an eight minute song. I think I think it was eight minutes long. But really, after listening to it, it doesn't sound like it's eight minutes long because it's enjoyable to hear and it's really right. there's almost nothing you can take out of it because if you take yeah. something out, it just doesn't fit. But you guys did take some stuff out of this newer version, and you wind up making it work. Yep, I think yep. the the solo is definitely definitely the highlight of the song. That's my, one of my that's my favorite solo on the debut EP. Hell yeah! Oh, thank you, bro. That before I play uh, portrayed belief, my wife wanted me to ask you guys a question. So this is for my wife. She wants to know if you guys could play in any country. Negative. What's on your buck? <laughs> <laughs> We see where Kevin's. Hey, 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 Ke- Kevin, you're out of the band. Yes. No, no European tours for you guys ever coming up. If you guys are playing any country minus Kevin, what country would that be in and why? See, he's talking about country. Oh, country. Oh, I thought you meant country music. He's oh, my God. No, we're not talking about Oklahoma here, dude. We're talking about countries. <laughs> which which we're gonna you are gonna be in Oklahoma. We're gonna talk about that after this song. But what country would you want to play in? Not what I country would like song? To do, uh, Australia, obviously, just because I heard, I hear it's beautiful. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, just to say I've been to Australia. Of course, Europe, anywhere over there would be cool. I'd go anywhere that would have us. Honestly, that we if we could afford to pull it off, that'd be really cool to play anywhere. Yeah. Anyone who wants to listen to our music, we'd be happy to play there. As long as we can get there and back safely, yeah. I'd be going to South American shows, to <laughs> Santiago, Chile, or yeah. even Germany. Actually, Germany. Sure, hell yeah. yeah, it'd be great yeah. to say, "Yep, played there, played there." Yeah, so you know, I think as you guys get bigger, I, I, you guys stay together. You guys have really good sound. I wouldn't be surprised if you guys get to go on some European or worldwide tours. I think that'd be awesome. I think that's your next step. That would be cool. Because you guys have just played in Texas, I guess for now. But we're going to talk about your Oklahoma show in Noble that I'm going to want to go into. We're going to talk about what that show's about. But I did ask my wife's question, so she'll be happy about that. I said, what What are some good questions to ask? And she was like, well, you know, because I asked the same band. Every, fucking, every, every band can ask the same fucking question. So I'm trying to, like, <laughs> mix it up a little bit, you know, get some other ideas. And not the right. same ideas. Not the same ideas. Okay, let's play uh, Betrayed Belief right now, and let's talk about your Noble show. We'll play your last song, and then we'll get some shout-outs, and we'll be done. So here is Betrayed Belief by Perceived.
so does that song kind of go from like do all your songs kind of go from hard to soft? No, yeah. no, no, no sex, no sexual innuendo. Right. Some start off soft and then they get hard and then they get soft and hard. You eventually have to solo. But does it does it get does it get hard? Does it does it get hard again within the first five minutes of the song? Yeah. It's lucky, we hope it does. You know, it, it just doesn't stay hard. It goes, it goes from, you know. <laughs> so, 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 sounds like an age problem. <laughs> if you ask me, I don't know, go to the doctor or something. <laughs> That's funny. So if you guys, we talk about country music, and here's a question that you guys, you each need to answer this question. If you were going to do a country cover... What country cover song would that be? Before you answer that, I'm going to ask it one more time because I'm going to record this on video and I'll put this on Facebook. Here is the question. One more time. If you had to cover a country song, you were forced to. What's your favorite country song? Even if you don't like one, you got to pick one that you would want to cover. Yeah, I'm going down Jordan's game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not even country. It's like, <laughs> you can't say that song. <laughs> I, 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 love, I, I got my two choices. Are we doing personal or if we, as Person, a band? Personal. 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 Oh, okay. So, I'm curious uh, to Charlie, because he's more of yeah. the country music uh, enthusiast out of all of us. It would, it would probably, it'd be a Merle Haggard song. It'd be either be Silver Wings or Misery and Gin. I don't know any of those songs. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who that is. I don't even know who that artist is. <laughs> it's just some good old boys. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. All right, go ahead. It would, uh, definitely be a Garth Brooks song, either uh, If Tomorrow Never Comes, because that's just beautiful, or uh, Thunder Rolls, because it's a little more rocking. Okay. I hate. <laughs> to pick a country song I, I, I guess I'll know some Hank Jr <laughs> okay okay you know I think because of your sound I'm going to recommend one that you cover you don't have to do it but I'm going to say it anyways everyone's going to hear this shit I think you guys should do <laughs> Friends in Low Places I don't know who sings that song <laughs> you said that did he say that that was the one that tortured him just a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah, you guys were talking. You heard some Garth Brooks earlier. I didn't know it was that song. That's the one. <laughs> that was the one. And then I said, everybody has to like that song. I don't care what kind of music That's, you listen yeah, to. I believe you my like exact phrase was, I would rather shove an ice pick in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you guys are going to do that one and make it sound way cooler. So you're going to like it. You're going to like it after that. I think I think Chris would have good vocals over that. I don't. I, you know, honestly, I didn't know if it was Garth Brooks or Tim McGraw. But until you guys said that, we talked about it earlier. That's when I realized that it was Garth Brooks. That's when I realized that. Okay. Metal song. That'd be cool. Did the Thunder Roll? I know somebody did uh, Thunder Roll. That'd be pretty. By Garth Brooks. I wonder, how would you make friends in those places heavy? I'm sure you. Can. Oh yeah. Everybody makes everything heavy. At least, at least you didn't say you would like cover Kid Rock. Because that's also just <laughs> rock country, you know. We're going to cover Ball with the Ball. The wow. band. <laughs> death metal version? Uh, <laughs> that's a good song. I you can do say, a death, death metal, metal version kinda, of God, Only God Knows Why. Death metal version of Only God Knows Why. But you got to auto-tune it up. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome to have. You guys are awesome to have on this podcast. Thanks for being on here. So, <laughs> what? Yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. So, what's your show in Noble, Oklahoma, about? Because that's I don't. I, you know, honestly, I don't know where even Noble is, but it's in Oklahoma, so it can't be like too far away. It's about three out of three and a half hours from my. I think it's not too far from the Texas um, Oklahoma border. We've uh, submitted for one of those festivals, so we're waiting to see if, uh, of course, if everything continues next year. It's in I want to say May of next year. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a rock festival up in Noble, Oklahoma, and they said they get back to us in 14 days. So we're still on that little waiting list. See what happens. Let me see how far it is from you. Hold on a second. Yeah, see how far it is from you. How far is Noble, Oklahoma? Oh, it's 39 miles. Nice. Hey, yeah, that's yeah. nothing. When are you guys playing there? Uh, in, in Memorial Day weekend, if it happens. What? When? What's Memorial Day weekend? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Grab a calendar. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Google. Siri, when is Memorial Day weekend? Hey, Google. Memorial Day weekend starts Friday, May twenty eighth. 
<laughs> so you guys, yeah. are you playing on Friday or Saturday? We 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 don't know. We yeah. don't, we don't even know if we've made it in yet, but uh, we're hoping, keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, and that's not even until May, so I'm definitely yeah. gonna need a reminder. <laughs> I'm sure if we get in, you'll see me promoting it everywhere. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Okay. Oklahoma. Rock, uh, Rock, Rock, Rockahoma. When is Rockahoma usually? Is Rockahoma happening? Oh, yeah. You just, think you think I fucking know the answers to these questions? Know. I don't know the answers to these questions. <laughs> I, you can't even. And that, you can't even ask Siri that question. Siri doesn't even know the answer. Hold on. <laughs> Siri, when is Rockahoma? <laughs> A Rock, Oklahoma 2021 prior three-day hard rock festival. Oh, shit. It did fucking know. It sent me a link. Fri- there you go. Friday, September 3rd uh, through September 5th, which is a Sunday. Okay. Rock, Oklahoma. Yeah. And then it says COVID. Yeah. Then it says fuck, fuck COVID. Are you guys going to try to get on? <laughs> Are you guys going to try to get on Rock, Oklahoma? Oh, that'd be cool. It'd be cool. We can figure yeah. out how to submit our music. It's really all it is is figuring out submitting now since, you know, we're doing all, everything independently and DIY, so. Yeah, keep on doing that. All right, last song we're going to play, Give you guys, we're going to let you guys give some shout-outs to some bands that you've played with, uh, mm-hmm. and then we're going to end the podcast. The last song is called Not To Be, and what? also, do you guys all write the lyrics, or does just Chris write the lyrics? Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the older ones were older lyrics that were already written, but like darkening and other parts that needed to be finished, we write together. So, okay, so you know. what is not to be about? Uh, this is actually, uh, I'll let Kevin explain this one. Okay, so me and Chris actually met right after the suicide of my first wife. Um, oh. He, he came to the funeral, and uh, right afterwards, he picked up an acoustic guitar and started playing. Um actually sat there and played for hours and hours and hours and just let me uh, get all my emotions out. And that's when me and Chris became best friends and uh, have been ever since. But not to be is about suicide um, and that dark place that we all know someone who's been there or been through it or yep. going through it. And, uh, you know, it's do, just part of life. So do you um, guys do a lot of suicide prevention shows or talk about that during your concerts? Uh, we don't really bring it up during the show, but we've kind of brought it up online just 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 to make people aware of it that people ain't alone, that other people struggle just like you. Don't don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. Yeah, I have some friends that I'll, I have some friends that can be pretty depressed at times, and I talk to them, you know. And I think that just happens. I I I'm, I feel like I'm fortunate. I don't have that gene at all. Like that's not a part of my mentality. But a lot mm-hmm. of my a lot of my friends are and. It's like I don't understand it, but by hearing some of these people talk about it, I guess I understand it more. And it's kind of just one of those topics that's very kind of touchy to talk about. It is. Exactly. But, you know, that's, uh, you know, oh, that music is our right. way of getting our soul out. So, the, yeah. You know, this song just speaks about, uh, to me, a time of my life. And, uh, you know, music is therapy. Sure. It absolutely is therapy. Let's play Not To Be right now. I'm curious to listen to the song. Here we go. Perceived. Inside, 
That was not to be by perceived, but it's time to get down to the fucking tough questions that the fans really want to know. Have you ever sharded on a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we, we were just talking about this earlier. I'm not one to kiss and tell. Like, luckily, uh, we've been fortunate, but man, you know, we, we were going to ask you, uh, what would you do if you sharded on a podcast? What would you do? I, I would, I would turn in this interview around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think I might have sharded tonight a little bit. <laughs> I just, I just get the podcast. I just, I just sit around in my own filth until, until the podcast is over and don't say anything about it. It'll dry out. You're hey, fine. Okay, there, there it is. See, we don't have to like a them. professional. Like a pro. <laughs> the the show pro. must go on. <laughs> See, now we know. So if that, that moment ever arises, we are prepared with knowledge. Although I, I, I did, I did pause, pause the podcast, like, I think a couple ago. I had to take a shit really bad. And I was like, hey, hey I got to get like 10 minutes. All right, guys. So give me 10 minutes. And I even told them I had to go take a shit. They're like, no, nah, it's cool, man. We get it. <laughs> Wait a minute, nature call. So nobody go in there for about four or five minutes. <laughs> I came back. I came back like, how you feeling? I was like, I feel a lot better. This, this, it's hard to like think of good questions to ask when you gotta take a shit really bad, man. Oh yeah, I can imagine. You can't help. You know what the worst thing I hate when I'm at a concert and oh. there's like a porta potty and you uh. and you know you gotta you know you gotta drop a dookie, man. That's like the worst thing. That's, I hate those porta potties. They're the grossest things ever. Yeah, and you've been bad. drinking beer. <laughs> and you're drinking everyone. Well, if oh. you if you drink beer, then it's at least a little bit like fine. You get over it because you got that liquid courage <laughs> of, go, of going into heard, yeah. going into the the porta potty. But it's like if you're hungover and you and you got oh. the bubble guts and you gotta go, you know, I might I might just shark my pants instead. There's like there's ten hot girls right over here. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just avoid the hot chicks. <laughs> just avoid them. <laughs> if you guys could give a shout out to any band that you've played with or that you know locally from the Dallas scene, the Dallas Fort Worth scene, or maybe just the Texas scene, or just Righteous bands they play with, kill. who? Yeah. Righteous Kill. Righteous right. Kill are some awesome dudes uh, right here from uh, Dallas. Third Dafford. Righteous yeah, Kill. Righteous Kill. Hell uh, yeah. We got, uh, Check the, them out. The roommates are really cool right yeah, here. From absolutely. Dallas. And Mothership. If you haven't heard of Mothership, they're a bigger band from right here in Dallas. Uh, very what? cool group of dudes. Three piece as well. Vane. Vane's Vane. cool Vane's band. Cool. Cool, band. They, they're really cool dudes. Aesop. 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 We're, yes. we're actually really lucky. Dallas has a really good music scene. We have some really good bands. It's just uh, waiting to get these shows back going again, really. Yeah. Dallas, the Dallas music scene is absolutely fantastic. I, I live there. I know it. A lot of great bands come from Dallas that I've heard on my podcast. Oklahoma, on the other hand, you know, it, there, there is a scene here. When I first moved here from California, I'm from the Bay Area. So when I first moved here, I was kind of disappointed. But... The longer I live here, I will say that the music scene is getting a lot better here. I I specifically, you guys see the posters behind me. I got Misfits, Dropkick Murphys over there. So I'm like a huge punk rocker, right? I also like hard rock and metal, but punk's punk's my heart. And the punk scene in Oklahoma is not bad. I'm surprised. It's really, either either it's gone up or I was just unaware of it. But doing this podcast, I have a lot more knowledge now of local scenes and what the, the, the... before I did this, I was totally oblivious to any new music at all. Like, the, I originally was going to start this podcast to play, like, emo music from the early 2000s. <laughs> but, 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 but Taking Back Sunday didn't get back with me. And so, so I decided to go with more of, uh, of, of, of artists that are local to their area. And then, and then we played some bigger bands that done bands warped tours and some world tours, which I love all those people. You know, we've grown a lot. But originally, originally, that's what I was going to do because I was kind of, I love that, like, early 2000s emo, screamo, like, the used and shit like that, you know? And so, anyways, I forgot where I was going with the whole story. I'm just rambling on now. <laughs> so, you guys give your shout-out to bands. Um, I hate giving shout-outs because I feel like I always leave people out. Hey, but did you guys Absolutely. know? Yeah, did, I know I didn't name Someone's everyone. always going to be better. Oh, yeah. The shirt oh, yeah. Iron yep. Jaw. I'm wearing Iron Jaw, another great local band. So, hey, I love you all. Hey, hey, if someone gets butt hurt, you tell them go take a shark and deal with it. 
<laughs> Rod Dory. Right. <laughs> you got a chart. <laughs> That's right. Where can we guys find you guys? Where can we buy your merch? Do you guys have merch? Where can we buy your okay. CDs? Facebook. Got, what is, tell, me, tell, tell me all of it. We've got CDs. We've got shirts, uh, stickers, uh, all posters. available. Posters. And yeah. posters all available at our website at perceivedband.com. We're actually running a sale on our Store Frontier store. Uh, our hoodies are only 25 bucks right now. So uh, if you want a hoodie for 25 bucks, it's at uh, storefrontier.com slash perceived. I think there's actually a link in our... There is a link on our webpage at perceivedband.com. Yep, in the merch section. Too. That's why I love when a whole band's there because some band members know more. like, Or will say something that someone else didn't say. Some of them ask a question, they're like... Do I have a website? I don't even know. And I have to, I have to look. I have to, I have to look up a website. Uh, at the below seven, uh, their singer and their band's fucking awesome. But uh, he didn't know his website, so I looked it up for him and said it on the podcast. And so, and then, but but you know that's not his job. His job is a singer. He's not the promotions guy. Right, right. right. So we that's all extra things. Yeah, yeah, we all kind of do our own things. Yeah. Like, like Kevin does the, the photography. He does all the pictures for the band. Awesome. Sorry. I guarantee yeah. you, I will get before the end of this year. Chris will send me two more pot, two more Absolutely. songs about being played on the podcast. <laughs> not realizing that he's already been on the podcast. <laughs> I'll probably just send it to you again just to make sure you got it. <laughs> hey, hey, remember me? <laughs> That's awesome. I can't wait to see you guys. Hey, you guys, I don't want you guys uh, to leave anywhere. I want to thank all of our listeners. We're, we keep on growing. I love it. Keep on paying attention. We got some great bands. December is going to be awesome. January is also going to be fantastic. So thanks for listening to The Loud Spot. I'm Sebastian Cosby. Happy holidays. And we'll talk to everybody later. See you soon. Bye. This is the Loud Spot outro by Nothing Short of Tragic. Is this all talk with no action? No. Is this my thoughts with distraction? No. Is this what I bought that's in fashion? Or is this the Loud Spot with Sebastian? Yes. Does Nothing Short of Tragic have his back again? Yes. Does everything that's good really have to end? Yes. A pin post has a pin show. So to get more episodes, make an order. This is over. Maryland sports fans, there's only one sports book in the great state of Maryland with over 50 years' experience booking bets and supporting customers. Betfred Sportsbook at Long Shots is now open and is the only sports book in Frederick offering cash betting on football, basketball, world soccer, and more. Visit the Betfred Sportsbook at I-270 and MD-85 in Frederick, right next to Long Shots Off-Track Betting. Go to BetfredSports.com for more information and your chance to win exclusive merchandise. Must be 21 or older. Play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER.